This video will discuss the Michaelis-Menten mechanism of enzyme kinetics. So an enzyme we can define as a protein catalyst for a specific biological reaction. And the substrate of this enzyme is just the reactant, which is the target for that enzyme. So we can describe enzyme catalysis as occurring in this kind of a cyclical mechanism. So we have an enzyme and a substrate, which are both dissolved in aqueous solution, perhaps inside the cell of some organism. Then the, they diffuse such that the enzyme and substrate come into contact. There's a rate constant of a forward reaction of the enzyme substrate complex being built where the enzyme reacts to the presence of the substrate. Perhaps it changes its structure to become more catalytic Perhaps the substrate gets locked into some pocket in the enzyme, maybe not. There's a K minus one where we go from the enzyme substrate complex back to them just being near one another. Or alternatively, we could have the enzyme performing a reaction on the substrate and producing a product. So the enzyme and product could go uh, backwards alternatively uh, going back to the enzyme substrate complex. And then the enzyme and the product will dissociate and the process can repeat as, and then the enzyme is free to repeat this on as many copies of the substrate as it would like. So Michaelis and Menten, two different scientists, proposed this mechanism in 1911. And this is a, the kind of chemical kinetics description of what I just described in words and pictures up here. We have E plus S, enzyme plus substrate going to form the enzyme substrate complex, ES, forward, re forward rate constant K1, reverse rate constant K minus one. And then the enzyme substrate complex reacts to form the enzyme plus a product, forward rate constant of K2, and reverse rate constant of K minus two. Okay, so let's describe some rates of change of the various species in this chemical reaction. So minus DSDT, S is a reactant, so it gets consumed. So we're describing the rate at which it gets consumed here. So it can get consumed by K1, which depends on the concentration of E and S. It can also get produced again by K minus one. So K minus one times concentration of ES. These all being elementary reactions, the rate law and order is implied by the stoichiometry of the reaction. So for the enzyme substrate complex, minus DESDT is equal to, well, we can, this is, these are the ways in which we can consume ES. Well, K2 and K minus one both get rid of ES and both depend on ES. So K2 plus K minus one times concentration of ES. Um, we can produce ES by K1 and K minus two. So K1 depends on E times S and K minus two depending on E times P. Via the steady state approximation, we can say that this rate of change of this intermediate is equal to zero, and we can use this to solve for the concentration of the enzyme substrate complex. And then finally, our product, the rate at which we produce our product, the change in the concentration of the product over time is equal to, well, we can produce the product by K2, K2 times ES, and we can consume the product by K minus two, K minus two times E times P. All right, so additionally, we can use the simplification that the concentration of the enzyme is equal to the initial concentration of the enzyme minus the concentration of the enzyme substrate complex. So our enzyme at any given point in time is either a free enzyme or it's an enzyme in the enzyme substrate complex. Either way, initially we start off with no enzyme substrate complex and all of it as enzyme, free enzyme. But um, our total enzyme concentration is limited to that which is free plus that which is in uh, the complex. Okay, so through the steady state approximation, I'm solving here the enzyme substrate concentration equals just an algebraic rearrangement of this plus substitution for E equals E naught minus ES. ES times K1S plus K minus one plus K2 plus K minus two times P, all of that in parentheses, and then minus E naught times K1S 
plus k minus 2p. So now I can move this entire term to the other side and divide everything by this term. And what I'll get is that my concentration of the enzyme substrate complex is equal to K1S times K2P over K1S plus K minus 2P plus K minus 1 plus K2. All of this times the initial concentration of the enzyme. All right, so our reaction rate as a function of time, which we could describe as the consumption of the substrate, so minus ds dt, is equal to, well, we have our um, effective rate constant there. So we have k1, k2, s minus k minus 1, k minus 2, p, over k1, s plus k minus 2, p, plus k minus 1, plus k2 times e naught. So that is all from this expression here. We have substitution for E being E naught minus ES and ES being this value. So substituting in those three equations, we get this result for the reaction of velocity or reaction rate. Additionally, as time equals zero, the concentration of the substrate equals the initial concentration of the substrate and the concentration of the product will say equals zero. So these terms with P all go away. And then what we're left with is the initial reaction rate equals K1 KS times S naught times E naught over K1 times S naught plus K minus one plus K2. So now we can define some extra quantities to make this a simplified final result. We're gonna define a quantity called the Michaelis constant KM, which is K2 plus k minus 1 over k1. And we're going to define a quantity called Vmax, which is equal to k2 times e0. So if you chug through all the algebra there, you can, arrange, you can arrive at this final arrangement of a, of a reaction rate. So the initial reaction rate of our enzyme producing product from the substrate is equal to Vmax times s0 over km plus s0. So let's analyze what this, what this equation implies about the mechanics of this particular process. So Vmax is the, is the rate when the enzyme is saturated. Vmax is the maximum rate of this reaction. So Vmax is whenever the concentration of the substrate is much, much greater than the Michaelis constant, the V0 equals Vmax. So if S0 is much, much greater than Km, then S0 plus Km is S0, and Vmax S0 over S0, the S0s cancel, and V0 equals Vmax. So when there's a ton of, of substrate lying around, every enzyme that's available is working. So we can't work any faster than all of the enzymes available working will do. So at very high concentration of substrate, the reaction is zeroth order in the substrate because all of the enzyme is busy. Um, alternatively, we have the, the case where the concentration of substrate is much, much less than the Michaelis constant. So in that case, we have Vma Vmax times S0 over Km plus S0 is approximately equal to Km. And so in that case, the initial rate is Vmax over Km times S0 and the reaction is completely first order in the substrate. So when there's only a little bit of substrate, these, there's more enzyme than substrate, and any substrate that is out there is gonna have plenty of enzyme that's available to convert it into product. So it's first order whenever there's so little substrate that there's a lot of enzyme available whenever a substrate is uh, diffusing through solution. So first order at low concentration, zero order at high concentration. Vmax is the maximum possible rate that the reaction can go to. And the reaction rate constant is Vmax over Km whenever we have a very low concentration of S of S naught. And then there's one more quantity of interest, which is this Michaelis constant and what its value is. So let's set the initial concentration of substrate equal to Km. So then we have Km equals S0. So we have Vmax, over, Vmax times S0 over S0 plus S0, which is 
v max s over 2s. So the s's cancel and we get v max over 2. So what the Michaelis constant is, is the Michaelis constant is the concentration of the substrate at which um, at which we'll proceed at one half of the maximum rate of the reaction. So we have the limiting behavior that at low concentration the reaction is first order in the substrate depending on Vmax over Km. We have the limiting behavior at high concentration that the reaction is zero order and the reaction the rate is Vmax. Vmax equaling K2 times the concentration of enzyme. So the maximum reaction rate is, is determined by how much enzyme we have and how fast K2 works. And then in the middle there, we have the Michaelis constant, which is the concentration of the enzyme, which makes this reaction proceed at half of its maximum theoretical velocity. And then the last point of note before we go is that this K2, which shows up in Vmax, K2 is what is called the turnover number. K2 controls what Vmax is per unit of enzyme. So it determines how many units of substrate one enzyme can turn over per unit of time under its maximum possible saturation. So K2 being the turnover number is in units of per second. So typically it's on the order of, of 1 to 10 to the 7th, where if you get a if you get an enzyme that's fast enough, it's purely diffusion limited, and you can produce uh, millions, tens of millions, or hundreds of millions of, of products per second per enzyme, and it's just limited by how fast the substrate can diffuse over to it. Many enzymes are much slower than that, but there are many enzymes which have a turnover number which is approaching kind of 10 to the 9, where it's just turning over product as fast as the substrate can diffuse and form this enzyme-substrate complex.